What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven. Today we're talking about the Hoka Carbon X3. I'm going to do the full review. But first I do need to let you know that Hoka did send the X3 to me to review. I did not pay for these. They're not going to proof this video. I'm going to release it and then they'll see it at the same time you do. And I'm always going to share my honest thoughts like always. Firstly, I always like to talk about looks because I want to run on a shoe that looks good and I like shoes that pop. I like flashy colors and that uh, that is met with the Hoka Carbon X3, at least this colorway here. I like to call these my sorbet shoes. Uh, you know, just the coloring reminds me of eating uh, what I call it, you know, sherbet as a kid. Uh, definitely looks like that to me, but I think it's a good looking shoe. So it meets that box for me for sure. Next, let's talk about some stats for the Hoka Carbon X3. It is a five millimeter drop shoe. For the men, it is 32 millimeters in the rear, 27 in the front for that five millimeter drop. And for weight of the Hoka Carbon X3, this is a men's size 11, weighed in at 9.4 ounces or 269 grams. So for me in a men's size 11 with a maximally cushioned shoe with a carbon fiber plate, I don't think that's too bad. And a women's size eight weighed in at 6.6 .6 ounces or 188 grams. That's what Hoka says. I obviously don't have a women's shoe, so I couldn't test it, but that's what they say. Before we go any further though, if you wouldn't mind going down below, clicking that little thumbs up button, the like button, it really does help out the channel and the video a lot, and I would really appreciate it. So obviously the X3 is a carbon plated shoe. That's why the X is there. That's why you can see the little X right there. Uh, this is a carbon fiber plated shoe. It's what Hoka says is basically their racing shoe or their long run shoe. Uh, maybe give you that little edge with that pop from the carbon fiber plate. It is a neutral shoe. It does have a little twist to it, but it does take quite a bit of force uh, with that plate in there. It bends this way okay. Uh, still pretty, you know, still pretty uh, stiff, but there is not much flex side to side. All right, moving on to the upper of the Hoka Carbon X3. As you can see, this is a one piece knit upper. So that means the tongue, everything is all part of the upper. It's one piece, uh, which kind of has some pros and some cons. So one of those pros and also slightly a con uh, is the tongue. Let's switch over to this shoe here that is not tied so you can see it a little bit more clearly. The tongue is part of that one piece upper, like I just said. So one of the benefits of that, one of the pros, is that tongue is not gonna slide down inside the shoe. It's gonna stay put. So you're not gonna have laces rubbing across the top of your foot it's going to feel pretty good up there. Uh, it stays put. It's not going anywhere. It's part of the upper. But the con to that, there's actually two of them, which you can see one right here. So when it's laced, as you can see, this one's not laced, but you can still see it. Uh, there's quite a bit of fabric bunching going on right here. So uh, that's one of the negatives of that tongue because as a standard tongue, it goes up underneath of the upper as you lace it and you don't get a lot of that extra bunching. So the other con, the laces go into the shoe and there's no tongue to go under those or over those and protect your foot from the laces. As you can see inside of the shoe, uh, it's exposed. So I was worried that this was gonna rub my foot, maybe cause an issue. In one hour runs, was not an issue at all. In my two hour long run, I did feel it just a little bit towards the end to the point to where if I was to wear these for a marathon, I would probably want to lube up the top of my foot just to be safe. I mean, that's the last thing you want is something as minor as that to cause you an issue in your race. Also need to say the Carbon X3 is true to size. So for me, men's size 11, this one fit just fine, just like all the other Hoka's in a men's size 11. One thing I will say though with the toe box. So if you're somebody that has previously thought Hoka shoes were maybe a little constrictive or uh, not as accommodating as you would have liked. This upper is pretty stretchy and I never once felt uh, like a tight toe box or constrictive. So uh, I think if you like a little bit of a wider, more generous toe box, I think you're gonna like the upper on the X3. All right, now let's talk about the lockdown. So the lockdown of the shoe, uh, definitely leave something to be desired, at least in my opinion. So with the one piece upper, the tongue, you know, the bunching of the fabric there, the way the eyelets are on the lacing system, there is no extra hole at the top for a lace lock. I think a lace lock would really help the shoe, but you can't do it. So I never once have been able to get the shoe really secure to where I generally like that lockdown to feel. Uh, it's not been bad and it's not to a point to where I wouldn't want to wear the shoe because I mean, I've worn it for two hours before and it was, it was fine really. Uh, but it does leave a little something to be desired. So if you like a really snug heel lock, I don't know if you're going to get it with this shoe. You know, I got to keep playing with it. I've worn them now for 44 miles. Uh, two hour long run being the longest that I did. But I will say though that I actually, you know, a lot of people don't really like this, uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, the elf ear in the back or the, the, the whale tail. I don't know what you want to call it, but 
Uh, I actually kind of like that because when I, you know, grab the back of the heel here and put your foot in it, it almost acts like a shoehorn and slides your foot right in there. So it's, I kind of like it. All right, as far as breathability goes of the Hoka Carbon X3 with this knit upper, it's actually very breathable. I mean, uh, just running with the shoe outside in the cold temperatures last week, uh, you know, I probably could have used another pair of socks because my toes got a little chilly. But with that said, in the summertime, I think these are gonna be fantastic. I mean, let's take a look at the tissue test here. You can see uh, when I switch that hair dryer on low, the tissue lifts up quite a bit. But when I switch the hair dryer to high, uh, I mean, that tissue all but came off the shoe and just stayed up. It's probably one of the most breathable shoes that I've ever tested. Okay, moving on to the midsole of the Hoka Carbon X3. So the midsole is different from the Carbon X2. This has the ProFly X, which you can see right there. Uh, it is a dual density EVA foam, has the ProFly X for that pop, that responsiveness that you want. Uh, then you have the carbon fiber plate running through the shoe, and then you have the EVA, which is part of the outsole, which we'll get to here in a minute. But this ProFly X uh, in the midsole is what they call a super critical foam, and it feels really nice, I've gotta say. Uh, it's not a soft shoe to where you put it on and it feels like, you know, super cushiony or marshmallowy. It actually feels quite firm underfoot, but yet it has the comfort for the long run. Like on those two hour runs, I didn't ever feel fatigue in the foot during the run. It felt nice. The carbon fiber plate and the aggressive meta rocker just felt really good. As you go through the gait cycle, it, just, it feels nice to run in these shoes. With that said, the next day after the run, uh, you know, recovering, I did feel a little foot fatigue, which I can only really attribute to the uh, the carbon fiber plate is my thinking because I've done many long runs a lot longer than two hours in other shoes and not had that same feeling. Uh, so it's possibly from the plated shoe, not really sure, but I did notice something. So just wanted to let you know. So the shoes, like I said, I do have 44 miles on them so far. Uh, with the midsole, you can see there really doesn't appear to be any breaking down at all to this midsole foam. Uh, really no creasing going on. It looks really good. I would expect this midsole to last for quite a while. I mean, easily at 250, 300 miles, probably more than that, honestly, probably into that 350, 400. Uh, it just depends on how it's gonna break down, but so far it looks really good. On the back of the midsole, we do have this, uh, kind of what they call a, like a swallow tail. You can see it has this little uh, shape to it there. Uh, I believe they did that for the stability of the shoe, the, the way it flexes as you land, it offers a little bit of, of extra movement in there. Uh, but like, I mean, like I said, the ride does feel really good, so maybe that's part of it, I don't really know, but it feels, it feels good underfoot. All right, let's move on to the outsole of the Hoka Carbon X3. As you can see, I just did my track workout yesterday, so these shoes are nice and stained now from the reddish orange track. Uh, it's a rubber track, it's not clay, but it definitely stained the shoes up pretty good. So the outsole uh, has been pretty darn nice. Uh, I've tested it on the road, on the track, a little bit of uh, fine gravel. Uh, it's been in very light rain and actually sleet this last weekend uh, with no issues at all. I think with uh, heavy rain, I believe it would probably be okay. I haven't tested it yet to know 100% certain, but with the way that these uh, ducks are here to kind of funnel water around, uh, I think it's going to probably do okay. As far as the wear and durability of the outsole, it is an EVA outsole, so it is going to wear. 44 miles, I am starting to see a little bit of wear right here on the heel, uh, and then a little bit on the toe off as well. Uh, probably a little more than I would expect to see after 44 miles, if I'm honest, but I do think that the outsole is probably gonna last into that 300, 350 miles, depending on your gait cycle, of course, because that's really gonna affect where you're wearing on the shoe. Okay, let's move on to the price of the Hoka Carbon X3. So, a little bit of bad news. Uh, the Hoka Carbon X3 did go up $20 from the X2. Uh, it's now $200. So the shoe is going to be released on April 1st is what Hoka told me, April 1st, 2022, uh, with a price point of $200. So it is a little more expensive, but for that price, you get a carbon fiber plated shoe, pretty lightweight shoe, it breathes well, it's pretty comfortable underfoot. So that's right in the range of reasonable for a carbon fiber plated shoe. Okay, the bottom line of the Hoka Carbon X3. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with the shoe, honestly. Overall, the whole thing, the fit, the feel, the upper, the midsole, the outsole, uh, I've been pleasantly surprised. I was really worried about the upper, but so far it's not really uh, been an issue. Uh, I do think so far, you know, I've got some other shoes that should be coming depending on manufacturing availability. Uh, but I do, th I am leaning towards this shoe for my marathon on March 27th. 
So uh, honestly there, you know, I feel that it's comfortable enough to do that. So I would recommend it to you guys as well for a marathon. I think it's gonna be a good shoe. The midsole is nice. It does feel really good. So yeah, I'm a fan of the Hoka Carbon X3. I would probably like to see a little bit different upper, get away from this knit, maybe go back to what they had on the uh, Carbon X2. Uh, that type of upper would be a little bit better in my opinion, but we'll see what the X4 comes out with, you know, in a year or so. But the X3, pretty good shoe. I like it. All right, well, that's going to do it for the Hoka Carbon X3 full review. Hope it was helpful. If it was, please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up down below. Click that like button. It really does help out a lot. Also, let me know in the comments if you have experience with the Carbon X2 or the original Carbon X, what you thought of it, and then when this comes out, if you've tried this one and you like it better or worse. You know, let me know. I'm curious to see what you think of the ProFly X midsole and the X3 as a whole. But thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. If you do want to take a look at another full review of a carbon fiber plated shoe from Hoka, the Bondi X, it's going to be right over here. You can take a look at that. And then on this side, we'll put up a playlist of some other shoe reviews to check out. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you all. And I'll see you on the next one.